Well, as an inventor and an experimenter, it's very much like being a um, an artist, a woodworker, a crafter, in that we have to learn what we need to know to produce our products, our art, our crafts. And in doing so, for my uh, bioplastic business, I had to do the same thing. I had to learn what I needed to know, and then I had to figure out how to do it, and to do it to produce professional results. So this is a little uh, video on how to cut wood, and it doesn't have to be wood, it could be foam board, um, plastic, vinyl, uh, many things like that, where the tolerances have to be within one hundredth of an inch or even closer than that, perhaps uh, a quarter of a millimeter. And we have to be able to reproduce that time and time again. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a couple little things right here. Now this is a miter saw and if you look up online you will see the little box saws, uh, you will see the powered ones, that sort of thing, and those are all fine, but for highly detailed work I chose this and I do all my cutting by hand. This is the gold standard of miter box saws. Now it's not an expensive saw. I think this is forty dollars. It has nearly a two foot blade on it, but we're going to go over how to use something, even if it's not something like this, we're going to go over a few techniques that are going to help you improve the accuracy of your patterns. I produced these, which I use to make silicone molds for uh, one of my products, and uh, these are all cut within uh, one hundredth of an inch. And the reason it has to be so tight is because the thickness of the product itself is only a millimeter and a half, 1.5 millimeters, so I have to be pretty tight. And I'm using silicone, so um, it introduced uh, a number of problems that I had to solve. So you may be faced with these same problems, and I'm going to give you a little bit of help that perhaps will help you solve some of yours. So let's get started on cutting some wood. You'll see several things here, but uh, let's first start with the two most important things. Uh, the number one most important thing is if you need accuracy down to a uh, precise one hundredth of an inch, you're going to need a device that can measure to the one hundredth of an inch. These calipers right here will go to 0, 0.00, so it goes to the hundredth of an inch. Measuring with a ruler simply will not do it 99% of the time. I uh, I use this and I can work all day without error. Now to improve your accuracy here is one of the most important tools to have in your hand and yes it's the blade is always covered in silicone but this right here is an exacto knife it has a very small thin blade. Okay, now the thickness of this blade has to be taken into account. So, and whether you're cutting with a knife or with the, with the saw, you need to account for the thickness of the blade or what is called the kerf. The kerf of this is 0 0.02. So it's two hundredths of an inch thick. And I know that the kerf of my miter saw is 0 0.4, 0 0.04. Now it's hard for me to pull it off, but it is 0 0.04 right there. That is the thickness of this cutting edge right here. Now you want to measure the teeth and not simply the back of the part. You want to always measure the cutting edge of whatever you're using. So now let's do a little bit of math to help you 
make an accurate cut. Let's say, for example, you want to cut something, and I'm going to use these little craft sticks made of oak as examples, and I'm going to cut. Perhaps one of them wants to be exactly four inches. And if you measure and cut four inches, it's going to be short you have to add the kerf of the saw. So actually what you're going to be cutting is this. Now let's go over ways to lay that out. And I use this simply as a straight edge. Also uh, a little trick here is if I'm measuring, if I'm cutting a single stick, that's fine. However, if I need several of these to be the exact same length, well, I will tape them together. And I will make a cut on my saw to first square this edge of all the sticks together and then make my cut. One cut and they're all exactly the same. Now, the best way to dial in on this exact measurement right here is to first make a blunt cut where you square up your edge. Even if it's square, I would take a little bit off again. There's always a little burr. And that is very easy to do for the first time. You really don't need a measurement on your first cut you simply need to square it up and these uh, these little pocket things are remarkably accurate so I use these and I don't have issue lay your knife blade right there make sure it is square to the wood perpendicular and you you cut and you make a good cut nice and deep because what you're making is a saddle for your blade to sit in to begin your cutting and from there that off That's your scale. To there. Lay your device on there. And then I'm not going to make the mark now because I'm going to first cut this because I want this edge to drop down behind and be flush against this nice and solid. Right now it's just laying on top and that could introduce some error. So I'm going to cut this and then come back and we're going to make our second cut right there. All right, so we've laid out a line for our first cut. If you can see that right there. Okay. And that's what we're going to put directly under the blade. Now let's talk about the setup that we have here. We have plenty of light and I'm going to use that light as very close to that so that I can be accurate when I drop the saw down on the line that I've scored with the knife. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use plenty of clamps. You don't want anything at all to move. I'm going to clamp this saw to the table but I'm also going to clamp my workpiece to the saw so that there's absolutely no movement. So I'm going to uh, set that up now. All right, so I have clamped the saw to the table, nice and secure, clamp on each side. And you can just make out 
my score mark right here and that's where I'm going to begin my cut so what I'm going to do is line up my piece and I'm going to drop my saw right down on top of it and then I'm going to clamp my piece before I begin my cut and I am going to move in and I'm actually going to split that mark and straddle it with the kerf of the saw my first clamp going to be straight down on the piece now here's a tip it's a very sh small piece and if I try to clamp it to the table it would simply roll on me so my first clamp is going to be simply to hold it down to the table and my second clamp is going to be farther back and this is where I'm going to draw it square to the back of the table so I'm square to the back and I'm square to the base now double check that my workpiece has not moved and in a saw like this the teeth are very fine but I'm still going to hold my workpiece steady here with my finger because it's a very small piece of wood and I'm not going to push the saw because when the angle of this teeth the saw is designed to cut when you push but I'm going to use nothing but back strokes to reduce the forces and it will cut in the backwards direction somewhat lift the saw and I'm going to continue this until I cut completely through the piece and I'll be back alright so I've made my first cut and here's my piece out of the table it has a little bit of a burr so you'll want to get yourself just a little flat piece, put some sandpaper, and almost perpendicular. You want to get rid of your burrs, and you don't want to take off a lot of material. And a great way is to simply not even touch the edge but to sand your burrs off flat like this this is the best way to clean wood okay now that I've removed the burrs let's discuss where we're at here I want my piece to be exactly four inches and I have added to that measurement 0.04 my first cut has re taken off half of this number that is one half of the kerf already okay just to tell you where we're at I'm still going to measure my length to 4.04 and this is where I'm using the square and I'm simply using it as a straight edge and it's something to uh, hold everything in place this jaw has dropped back slightly behind the workpiece so I can apply just a little bit of force on that and that doesn't matter because the whole thing will move I'm still at 0.4 now I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to put it right up next to the other jaw and I'm going to press that into place I'm going to remove that 
I'll hold in my knife and put my square right up the edge, right up to the edge of the knife. So now that I know that this is exactly at my measurement of 4.04 .04, and I'm going to cut there and make a nice healthy scoring line that my saw will like to sit in. And I'm going to repeat the cut. Now you've seen me make one cut and I'm simply going to do the same exact thing again. So once I get it cut, I'm going to come back and we're going to measure and see if I got it. All right. So there we have it. Okay. We, uh, we now know how to use the right tools to get accurate results. And uh, my goal was to cut a piece of wood, this piece of wood here, to exactly four inches. And we subtracted the kerf of the uh, saw. And if you want to subtract the kerf of whatever cutting device that you're using, in this case, I use the saw. We use a little trick to scrub a line because we are using wood. Uh, other top surfaces, you'll want to scrub as well. And what we have is exactly four inches, plus or minus zero. All right, so a practical demonstration and uh, something that I promise to share with you as we go through this journey together on doing stuff. And if you like this video, please subscribe and if you have any questions uh, you can leave them in the comments but I also include my email down in the description uh, feel free to email me with any kind of questions that you have I'm always happy to answer them I want to thank you and happy cutting it bye bye now